Welcome back. The rest of the CSS selectors are called pseudo selectors, and the particular group we'll demonstrate in this video are called the structural pseudo class selectors. And you can always tell that you're dealing with a pseudo selector because they have the colon symbol in the selector. So anytime you see a colon symbol in the selector in CSS, you know that that is a pseudo selector. And there's a whole lot of different types of pseudo selectors. Before we go any further, let's determine what the meaning of the word pseudo is. Okay, here's the definition. It means not genuine or a sham, not the real deal, not the real thing. And we can even listen to how it's pronounced. Pseudo. Let's all say it together. Pseudo. 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 Okay, the first structural pseudo class selector that we're going to demonstrate is the first child selector. So this pseudo selector will target all of the first children where they occur, where they're nested anywhere in the document. So since we have two div elements here, and each one has three paragraphs in it, we should get the first child p element within those targeted. And indeed we do. Now let's say if we take those out of their div parents to where they're just a bunch of paragraph siblings right next to each other, then only the first one is going to get targeted because it's the first child within its parent element. Now we're going to leave the same example right here and just change this to demonstrate the last child selector. So elements of type P where they are the last child anywhere where they're nested, if it's the last child nested in an element, it's going to be targeted for selection. So you can see we get the last paragraphs that are nested within those divs. Okay, now we'll demonstrate the first of type pseudo class selector. So what we're doing is targeting all li elements and we want to target their first of type wherever they're nested in the document. And let's see what we get with this. You can see we get the first li elements. Now we can use that same example and just change this to say last of type and this will demonstrate to you how to use the last of type pseudo class selector. Now this should light up and select the last elements, which it does. So the last elements of type li, wherever they're nested in the document, will be selected. Okay, now we'll demonstrate the only child pseudo selector. And this one makes me sad, because this little child is all alone. So this rule logic reads that anywhere in the document where there's button elements has only children within other elements. So if they're the only child within another element, they're going to be selected and targeted. And you can see we have two divs. This div has four child buttons. And this div only has one child button. It's an only child. So let's see if it targets it. So anywhere where there's only children, and they happen to be type button. And you can also put uh, the star symbol here, and that will target any type of elements that are only children anywhere in the document. So let's see what that does. We get the same effect, because this is the universal selector, remember? So any type of element, not just button. Okay, now on to the only of type selector. And what this does, it selects an element if it's its only type within its containing element. So within its parent element, if it's the only type. So we have P only of type. So this one here, it's the only P element within this div. And then you see down here, we have a div and it has two P elements. So these P elements should not be selected. But this one should because it's the only one of its type within that div. So let's check it out. And we get the expected result. Only that first paragraph is selected because it's the only one of its type within its parent element. Now we'll quickly take a look at the empty selector. So this rule reads anywhere where there's li element that's empty. It's going to be targeted for styling. And let's take a look at what we have. We have an unordered list, and in it we have four li list elements. The first one's not empty because it has some text in it. The second one's definitely empty. The third one's not empty because it has white space 
and the fourth one's not empty. So really, only this second one should be selected. Let's check it out. You see the result. Only the second one gets that light gray background because it's the only Li element that's empty. And if you want, you can use universal here again to target any elements that are empty, not just Li. Okay? And then finally, we have the root selector. So in this case, the root would be the HTML element. So basically, everything in the root element is going to be blue. Okay, so that knocks out the structural pseudo class selectors of CSS. There's a lot more pseudo class selectors, and there's also pseudo element selectors. And we're going to be delving into all of those.